It is Tuesday, August 30th, 2022. You are tuned into the Big V Mafia, the Big Vito brand, Twitch.tv, over on YouTube, I believe, as well. Noel's uploading some of these shows. Welcome to Men of Business. Vito, it has been a wonderful week inside of the world of sports. You're just telling me about the greatest troll job ever off air, and then you're like, all right, ready? Here we go. I'm like, man, I ain't even got my intro ready. Vito, how you doing, man? Everything is going good. You know, trolling and patrolling, guys. That's what I do, you know, and I do it on the sly. So if you want to know about it, subscribe, subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> Man, the off-air cast with Big Vito should be like a show on the Big Vito branch. Just, you know, random off-air recordings because that's where all the good stuff happens. Before the shows and after the shows. That's where all the real money is. The conversations that go on between everybody. It's fantastic. It's it, the, the, the sense of brotherhood at the Big Vito brand. Like, we can not talk to each other for a week. We sit down, just pick right up where we left off. You're trolling mutual friends, making them look like heels on their own Facebook page. And then you're just like, all right, you ready? Here we go. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know the life of the BIGV from the LOG, baby. Now, we'll be, before we get to, to to Mets and Yankees and 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 all the wonderful stuff going on in New York baseball, I gotta ask you about this newest controversy. Big Vito Lagrasso, Stephen A. Smith says the Knicks need a star like Donovan Mitchell, regardless of the price. Just get it done. The Knicks need a star. Like Donovan Mitchell, please tell me you're going to say that Stephen A. Fist, this just, he's terribly wrong. You already have a star. His name is R.J. Barrett. Guys, I want to say hello to the people in the chat. Annette, Serkin, how are you? Good to see you guys. Sedgkin? Sedgkin, okay. Sedgkin? Sounds like a member of Rammstein. When it comes to Donovan Mitchell and the New York Knicks, my viewpoint of this is, you have gathered all these assets. You have good players. You have good young players. Trading the cupboard for one guy reminds me of the Carmelo Anthony trade that killed the Knicks' future. They never recovered. They're just recovering. It's true. Yeah. Right. So for all the guys who come through or off, you know, off of that trade, Guys, if they were going to give three first-round draft picks and two guys, like a Randall and Evan Formier, I'd say do it. If you're giving up more young guys and going up all them, I wouldn't do it. I'd stand pat. Plus, they just signed R.J. Barrett to a $120 million team-friendly uh, contract extension. When I read that, I said, well, this kid wants to stay in Nick. He's not looking to break the bank. He just wants to play ball. Kudos to R.J. Barrett for being just a ball player. Is he the face of the franchise? Uh, he's the baby face of the franchise because he just did the people a solid. You know, like, like when um, Julius Randle did a, a hometown discount on his contract, you know, nobody shit the bet on that either. And these guys want to play for the Knicks. So, I mean, you know, why would you get rid of them if they want to get – and, you know, Julius Randle's not a bad – he's 2010. R.J. Barrett is, is, 20, is 28. Where are you finding guys like this on the market? And R.J. Barrett is only 22 years old. Yeah, and he's 22. I mean, for comparison's sake – and I, I sound ludicrous saying this, and anybody who knows me knows that I'm a I'm a Lakers fan. Kobe Bryant, my favorite player of all time, even though I don't think he's the GOAT. The GOAT is Magic Johnson. But that's a whole other conversation. Vito, he reminds me of Kobe. I mean, when you go back and you look at very young, early Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant that wasn't even a starter at that point in the league, R.J. Barrett, that's who it reminds me of. I don't see any reason why the Knicks would want to part with a 22-year-old R.J. Barrett for Donovan Mitchell. It, 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 they, I, I just don't understand why this is even a conversation. And Stephen A. is normally, I'm, I'm pretty in, agreeable with Stephen A. on his takes, even though he delivers everything like it's a hot take, brother. I, 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 I just, This seems insane to me. I, don't, I think they're the same player, if you ask me. You train them one for the other. One might have a bigger name. One has three all-star appearances. But R.J. Barrett, he has another good year this year. I think he makes the all-star team. He just missed Ooh, last year. 
And another thing that's that, in real time here. Donovan yeah. Mitchell is 25 years old. Right. I think I would rather have RJ Barrett. Six yeah. one two fifteen for Donovan Mitchell. Six six two fourteen for already for an RJ Barrett. And I feel like he's still developing his body. Like there's no way I would come off of RJ Barrett for Donovan Mitchell. I just oh. wouldn't do it. R.J. Barrett hasn't even hit manhood yet, and 25 no. is where you start to fill out. He hasn't even filled out yet. He's still playing it as a kid, right? Yeah. So if I was the Knicks, I'd stand pat. So you want to sign Carmelo Anthony for the bench and bring Derrick Rose, Carmelo Anthony off the bench, Evan Formier? Hey, I, that, that's, that, that's, that's 60 points on a good night. Yeah. Right, and so there's your on bench a good scoring. night. Yeah, absolutely. On a good night, there's your there's your scoring. So going all this in for and throwing all away, away all these draft picks that you worked the last four and five years to get. And by work, you mean stink? No, no. There's got to <laughs> be a there's got to be a strategy. There has to be a coach. There has to be a plan. These guys have had a plan and a coach, and they're not doing a bad job. Everybody wants to win uh, yesterday, but it doesn't happen like that. Yep, I agree. It, Shout it, out to our boy, Big Ray Hernandez. Oh, I, did you guys something else you wanted to say about the Knicks? No, 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 no. I was going to say, like, when you talk about your Lakers, right, they mortgaged their future for Anthony Davis. Right, that's where they threw away their, their assets when they did. They had assets then. Then they gave away three great players for uh, Westbrook, and those guys are killing it in Washington. I, I, you know, it wasn't too long ago that there was the DeAndre Ayton story, right? Yeah. And, and and especially here in Indianapolis, people were going nuts about this DeAndre Ayton story. He ends up re-signing with the Phoenix Suns. And today, Vito, you know what I heard? What? That there is speculation that Anthony Davis could be traded for Cam Johnson and DeAndre Ayton. On what plane of existence does that make any sense? They're looking to dump him? I mean, that's the way it sounds to me. I mean, like, this sounds like a LeBron move, if there ever was a LeBron move. Like, just unload Davis and give me something else. Yeah, but if they're going to unload Davis, why wouldn't they go get Kyrie Irving and get a couple – Seth Curry, uh, uh, Seth Curry, Kyrie Irving, a couple of draft picks, and Anthony Davis goes the other way. At and least got- Seth Curry. Make sure that you give us Seth Curry. I've always liked Seth Curry. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like he might be the most underrated player in the league in the last, like, five years. Or Patty Mills was a good player for them. Yeah. Patty Mills was, was bringing it last year, right? Even if you threw in Patty Mills – Seth Curry and and Kyrie Irving for Anthony Davis, no draft picks. That's three legit players for the Lakers. What do you make of Pat Bev? I think it's a great. I think that's what they needed. They needed. Do, do you think that signals the end of Russell Westbrook in Los Angeles, or do you really think that they're going to play Pat Beverly and Russell Westbrook together? I think Patrick Beverly was brought in on purpose to spark Westbrook. That's my, that's my theory, because if you got somebody who's been in your doghouse and your arch rival, now he's up your ass as your teammate. He and that guy is level is here. Westbrook might be cruising. Now you got to keep up with this guy. Bro, I thought it was a great move for them to get him. I wish the Knicks would have got Patrick Beverly. Jeannie Buss putting over Russell Westbrook huge today in an interview that I saw just shortly before we started recording. He was the best Laker last year. He was the most durable. Absolutely, he was. Absolutely. He played in like 78 games last year. 78 games. He didn't miss a beat. He played, and he, they say you had shit numbers. No, he had good numbers. They just weren't a, a, it was a, just a shit team. It was a shit team, but he didn't have astronomical numbers. He wasn't blowing people out, but he had a good season. By the way, when you talk about Jeannie Buss, right, and you talk about um, beautiful women, I think she is one of the prettiest ladies out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm really sad. Nobody ever says like how beautiful she is. They talk about like, you know, her doing her thing, but she is a beautiful lady. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe she's single. 
you know, she's just, not with just, the Phil Jackson no more. No, her and Phil split up a couple of years back. Uh, thank God. I don't know what Phil had, but shit. Zen master, man. It's all that mind mental manipulation shit. Worked on Shaq, worked on Kobe, worked on Michael, worked on Scotty. Just saying. Yeah, it worked on Noel too. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Let's, well, shift. let's 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 talk some big Ray Hernandez. Let's talk some New York Yankees baseball. Let's talk some New York Mets baseball. Aaron okay. Judge hitting his 50th homer today. Um, yeah. I mean, the Yankees, I, I, I feel like there's not really a whole lot to talk about until we get to the playoffs when it comes to the Yankees at this point. With the exception of Aaron Judge and this home run chase that he's on, he's on a quest to hit 60, Vito. I think he's going to get there. 61, Roger Maris, Noel blowing up our chat. Thank you for being, uh, you know, a participator today, Miss Noel, and being na- the uh, narrator of our product. Thank you. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, with that said, I think Aaron Judge getting 61 adds to his contract, gives him another perk, gives him a part of Yankee legacy. Okay. Now, the Yankees, ever since they beat the Mets, you know, up and up, straight up, really cool. But I think they hit a they they hit a lull again because they've been losing and they've been losing to shit teams. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, and I almost feel like the Yankees feel like none of this matters until October at this point. Like they they feel like they've just got the East wrapped up. There's still seven games in front of Tampa. Their run differential veto is 193. They're only five and five in their last 10, but I feel like they they seem to think if they can play a little bit better than 500 baseball as they, as they head into the playoffs, kind of rest some guys, get some guys a couple extra days off, rest an arm or two, they're going to do it because they're on cruise control. I think it's the wrong strategy and it bites them in the ass every single time because they come out flat in that first round of the playoffs. Where, where are you at? Do you try to go full bore into the playoffs or do you like this strategy of, Oh no, we're just, we're, we're good. We're seven games up. Like nothing to worry about here. First up, I want to say guys, you know, make sure everybody subscribes, subscribe, subscribe. And, um, I got to tell you, I'm a different kind of person. I'm a guy who never takes off. I'm a guy who plays hard. I'm a guy who wants to compete every day. Right. So whether it's pickleball or softball or basketball, right? You know what gives me great joy? I mean, I don't play basketball like I used to, right? But when I could still run with the young dogs in the park and I can get two or three games in at this point in my life and I'm running and I'm trying and I'm keeping up. No, okay. Are you going to catch and shoot like you used to because your legs are not in shape, right? But I know if I went down there for two weeks and I played, my game would come back. It's in it's in, in me, right? When you play any kind of sport, do you want to sit out there and just swing and go half ass? No, I can't do that. I'm not programmed like that. I'm not built like that. If I was the New York Yankees and I had a chance to wipe out the division, I would wipe out the division. I would go full every day. You look at the Mets. Everybody, okay, we're going to switch to the Mets now. They have the best one-two pitching punch in all of baseball. You got Scherzer and DeGrom, right? Scherzer is, a, is if they don't make him Cy Young this year, the guy's throwing BBs, he's throwing darts, he's, he's got it going on. I don't know who's in the run for the, for the uh, Cy Young, but Max Scherzer is having one of those Jason DeGrom Cy Young years. The wins might not be there. Carlos Carrasco has 13. Jason DeGrom, he didn't pitch all that much. Tejon Walker just got hurt. But the Mets, like all in all, if it wasn't for Matt Schultz, they he's been the glue of the season. I am really worried that next week, by the time we have this conversation, you're just going to be in a miserable mood, Vito. What? Because I, I feel like there is a real possibility that the Mets aren't even in first place by this time next week. I feel like this so. this series coming up with the Dodgers right. is going to be huge for the New York Mets. If they can at least go out there and get a split, I think they would be very, very happy. If they go out there and get swept by the Dodgers and Atlanta catches fire, 
the Mets could be in some real trouble because I mean they're playing they're six and four of their last ten. I mean right. they're, they're they're playing pretty decent baseball, but man, I'm telling you this this Dodgers team just looks like they're on a freaking mission. Yeah, but the Dodger team for the last five years have been monster. They have had monster teams, right? And um, the pitcher who got suspended, uh, what's his name, Barra? Uh, right? What, am I saying it right, Max? Yeah, I believe so. Barra, okay. They don't even have him. And he and he he was one of their main cards, and they're still going, right? They just brought Joey Gallo over from the Yankees. All of a sudden, he starts hitting. Come on. Yeah. Dodgers eight and two in their last 10. I mean, I, I feel like the Dodgers feel like they got embarrassed by the Braves last year. I feel like that's what this is. Like the Dodgers feel like a different team. They feel hungry this year rather than we have the best roster in baseball. We should be the best team in baseball. Like they feel like they are really playing with a chip on their shoulder this year. I don't want to be the team on the other side of the Dodgers right now. All right, but let me ask you a question. Who in the Mets shooting at the Dodgers? Let's like look at like, let's look at like the you know like strategy here. Are they shooting Degrom? Are they shooting Max? Are they shooting um, Bassett? Has been another great pitcher for the Mets. He's a, he's another ace. Mets legit have three or four aces in their staff. I'm I'm really interested to see how this whole thing plays out. Of all the the kind of upcoming schedules, everything that I'm seeing. On paper, I feel like this feels like it's a playoff series. It is. Like, it feels like this is, do the Mets belong in this conversation, or is this just the Dodgers to lose at this point? That's what it feels like to me. No, it is. And on a good note, the Mets had old timers day, and they all talk about the Mets, and they suck, and Shea Stadium, and shitty field, and all that thing. But the Mets did one of the greatest things this uh, old timers day, and they retired Willie Mays' baseball number. How and was that Willie, not done already? Bro, the Wilpons did not want to do anything for, for the Mets. They didn't want to spend any money. They were cheap. They didn't want to enrich their history. But let me tell you something. When you could retire Willie Mays on your ball club as one of your ball players, even though he played for a year with the Mets at the end of his career, right? I mean... I thought that was one of the classiest things the Mets ever did. At like it, it said, sent sent a message to the fans. Hey, we're here. We're gonna play. We're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna recognize our start. You know, I, I grew up Mets fan. I saw Cleon Jones walking out. They saw Mookie Wilson. I saw Lee Mazzilli. I saw Mike Piazza. Right. I saw Ed Cranepool. Ed Cranepool was probably like you know like. Bigger than God back then. Ed Cranepool, New York Mets. He was a saint. He was like Giuliani during 9-11. You know what I mean? Could do no wrong. That's how that's what that, that I was ste steady Eddie Cranepool, right? Right. You talk about Felix Mion and Buddy Harrelson and Wayne Garrett and you know all the rest of the greats that pitched for the New York Mets. Right? And or or played for the New York Mets. And this Mookie Wilson. It's uh Bartolo Colon hoping to come back and he's still out there playing ball. Greatest right? gift, greatest gift you can have. And this this goes out to everybody out there. No matter what age, guys, you only get to play ball one time in your lifetime. And if you could make it through your whole lifetime playing ball, do it. Don't ever still let nobody tell you not to play ball. Don't ever let nobody tell you to do is not to do a sports thing. Don't ever let nobody deter you from doing something you grew up loving. I, Vito LaGrasso, am a ball player. I've been a ball player my whole life. I've been an athlete. I play ball. I picked up a new sport. I'll play this one, right? If they had if they had flag football here, or if they had football in this place, I'd rock it. I'd be out there like a beast. I mean, it would be it would be like unfounded, right? I would like to still play basketball. I still like doing these things. I'm athletic and I'm still able to at this point in my life. So why shouldn't I do it? And for all those people who say, ah, I don't know, I can't. Guys, you get one chance at life before it's too late. Go right. do it. Go do your thing. I remember in 1991, we had tickets to the San Francisco Giants A-League affiliate in Clinton, Iowa. 
Right. And uh, that Clinton Giants pitching staff had four guys who made it to the majors and were pretty decent pitchers inside of the majors. And then there was the fifth guy and his name was Dan Henriksen. And Dan Henriksen played in Clinton, Iowa for four years, Vito, four years from 18 to 22. He spent in Clinton, Iowa playing minor league baseball because in his words, what the fuck else am I going to do with my life? Kids getting paid to play baseball. He had no dream of making it to the majors, but he was playing minor league baseball. He's got free room and board. He's making just enough money to get something to eat. And he's out playing baseball professionally for, for years. I, that was I, the life, man. And I had such mad respect for him. It always stuck with me. You know something, guys? When, you, when you're blessed to be a pro athlete at any, at any sport, right, you are... It's a different lifestyle for sure. Okay. My my dream was to be a pro basketball player. That was what I wanted more than anything because I had I I I could play. Right? I was good. And then you try out for the Olympic baseball team, you say, okay, can I do this? And you get scouted, but because you don't have the right people behind you and you're throwing in the eighties and you're pitching against the best, you know what I mean? There might be a click of us to us. A click ahead of you because remember, I didn't train at the sports. I just played the sports. Imagine if I would have trained at the sports, right. right? That's the difference. When you train to be a wrestler and you train every day and you program your body, that's how you become the best. And why would you slow down and why would you give it up and why would you do it? You look at, um, let's take Kurt Angle. Let's just take, I'll pick Kurt Angle, right? Now, Olympic gold medalist. That's the top of the. That's the best you can be. Is Olympic gold medal. Doesn't matter what you are in the WWE. You're an Olympic gold medalist, right? The Iron Sheik, another Olympic medalist. You talk about these guys who practice and practice and train and practice on the real. You get to do this as a privilege to be able to do this in your pro wrestling. Okay. No, do you have to go nine to five? No, you have to go 24 hours a day because it's a full-time job. You go to the gym twice. You're always worried about how you look, what you eat, what you're doing, how your tan is, where you're going, how's your weight, how's your skin, how's your teeth, how's your face. It, it, it's a big thing. It, it's, a, it's a mindset. Yeah, absolutely. And you bring that up and it's interesting because we segue into the NFL season is upon us, ladies and gentlemen. The preseason's done. The conditioning of bodies is done. The hits have been taken on the field. And now we've got a bunch of guys losing jobs that will hopefully get picked up on practice squads and continue their dream of playing for professional football, at least at some level. Vito, have you seen anything inside of the preseason? Who are your early Super Bowl picks? Like, I'm, I'm looking at this thing. Let's get it on the record. Vito called it back in August. These are the two teams that are going to be playing in January. What would you see during the preseason? I thought one of the greatest teammate moves made during the summer was Jimmy Garofalo restructuring his contract to play with the San Francisco 49ers. How about that? Right? How about that? That guy gave up $25 million just to be a 49er. Yeah. And it's not like there's not a market for Jimmy Garoppolo. There's at least a half a dozen teams yeah. right now that would be more than happy to take Jimmy Garoppolo off of the Niners' shoulders. Another guy who surprised that I don't think he played with a team, I don't think he played preseason – Dominic and Sue, that guy's a beast. I think yep. he overpriced himself. He wasn't worth nine and ten. I thought he was worth a five or a three because that's what his play rate was. But you talk about somebody you could plug in for 17 games, that guy, right? The Jets shocked me today when they released their, their all, all preseason pro quarterback who – who did everything you could do to make it and you got called in the office. There was no Vince Papali story for this kid. And he got cut today. I was shocked. What didn't he do to make this team? Please tell me. 
I mean, I think when you talk about teams that would be more than happy to take Jimmy Garoppolo off of the San Francisco 49ers hands, the New York Jets are on that list. I just don't think they liked what they saw. I'm not sure what it is that they didn't see, but they must not have liked what they saw. Somebody's going to pick that kid up. No, somebody will, but then you had that kid, Mike White, who had that spectacular three or four games, and then he got hurt, right? You got Joe Flacco. He's Joe Flacco. I mean, you know, he's a competent quarterback. Super Bowl winning. Winning. Quarterback Joe Flacco. Right. Then you have the Giants. I think they're in more of a mess. I don't think they know which end is up. The Dallas Cowboys really don't know, have a clue. They're going to go undefeated. Right. According to Michael Irvin. According to Michael Irvin. But I mean, come on, bro. <laughs> Tom Brady losing his BFF. Did you read about that? I, I I still think Gronk is back by Thanksgiving. I'm not talking about Gronk. I'm talking about the backup quarterback who was uh, who Tom Brady's best friend on the team, and he got oh, cut today. Interesting. You didn't see that? No, I didn't. Right, and that was a shock. I mean, you mm. Tom Brady's right hand, you're his boy. You expect to be on the team, and all of a sudden, you're like, "Yo, Tom, what the fuck happened?" Can you call Interesting. Vince? Yes, 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 yes. I thought that was a shock because the guy's been there, I think, for eight years. Wow. Hmm. And Denzel Mims keeping his job with the Jets was another shock. At my last game he had where he had eight catches, 100 yards, I think saved his ass. Because if he didn't do anything, he I think he was cut. He was gone. Do you see any teams on the horizon that you think are going to be that? Oh, that's the surprise team of the year. There's always one or two. Honestly, I don't think there's a surprise team this year. I think it's pretty, pretty well set. You're going to have Tampa Bay, you know, fighting it out in the division, right? The Saints are going to be there. Um, the Green Bay Packers are going to be there. The Chiefs are going to be there. Okay. Um, the Rams are going to be there. The Bengals are going to be there. The, the, this, and then when you come back east, all right, you talk about the uh, the Giants, the Redskins, the uh, Dallas Cowboys. And Philly. And Philly. Those are the four that fight it, fight it out for six or seven wins and win the division. What do you do? I mean, there is no... You know, hope the Dallas Cowboys, they spent all this money on two guys and they are going to be the shits. I, the worst thing is that Dallas ends up like a 10 win team. They get into the playoffs and then they're going to get blown out by, by a real playoff team. I think it's sad because they, they made such mistake and Jerry Jones was under pressure to sign those two guys who have not won anything. But then you have all these quarterbacks who want all this money, who haven't won anything. It has Tom Brady paying, playing for fourteen million. I think he's playing for fourteen million dollars this year. Can you look that up? Yeah, absolutely. Tom Brady's salary is going to be in the middle of the pack, and he's the best quarterback in football. I mean, I, I still feel like fifteen million for twenty twenty two. Fifteen million dollars. Seven. Are, are, are you betting against Tom Brady? No, no way. I, until somebody beats the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in January, I feel like all my money's on the go. I think Tom Brady. But there's the thing, guys. Fifteen million dollars. Seven Super Bowl rings. Trying to get to ten. Dak Prescott and all the rest of these guys that are making 40, 40. million forty million dollars and they have won nothing. Yep. Disgusting. Disgusting. Tom Brady laughs at all these guys. If the San Francisco 49ers start slow, how soon do they pull the trigger to go to Jimmy G? Five games. Five games. I don't think they're going to let it go. If it's two and three, I think they switch. It looks like they play the Rams week four. 
that's going to be the test right there. That Rams defense and how Trey Lance goes up against that Rams defense. That's going to be make or break. Otherwise, Jimmy G could be back in more ways than one. I think so. Now, wrestling news, right? Let's just dabble. Did you see the picture of Vince McMahon working out at Planet Fitness? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Yes, you did. You had to. Oh, I didn't. I saw the picture of him on his birthday. Hiding his face. When you're the head of the family, never hide your face. Oh, old Vincent Planet Fitness. Shocker, huh? Wow. He couldn't wow. Afford, you couldn't afford the 40 to go to lifestyles. Wow. <laughs> you went to Planet Fitness for 10. <laughs> I mean, wow, they even pulled, like, your key card to get into the gym, bro? Yeah. Because there's a gym at WWE headquarters. They've got a full gym in there. Yeah, but he's not allowed in there because he's under investigation. They, they pulled his key card. Ain't that the shit, huh? Ain't that the shits. Can't Ain't even work out shit. at the gym that you built. It's the Big V Mafia, the Big Vito brand, Big Vito LaGrasso, and Dr. Jargo, P-H-D Vito. Anything else you wanted to talk about this week before we get out of here? No, I just think that uh, we covered the shocking news of football, baseball, basketball, you know, and just on a note, for those of you who watch, I ribbed (laughs) Mr. Hernandez today, and I was the heel. I trolled him. I owned him. It was my day. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. I'm so happy about that. Oh, that just made my day. It's the men of business. We will be back next week for an all new edition of Sports Talk. And Vito, we doing the sit down this week. We're going to sit down with the Cleaver and see what's going on in the world of pro wrestling. I think so. I think Thursday we're going to get with Noel, you know, which get everybody's schedule. I think uh, Mr. Virtue, I think Colin is invited. I think we're going to have a great show, get some minds rolling, talk about some great aspects, you know, and I'll save it for the sit down. You know, the Rollins and uh, Riddle conflict. Stay tuned. Wednesday. Wednesday, Noel says. Wednesday, men of business. Or no, Wednesday, the round table. Sit down. Round table, sit down. Jesus, Noel. Jesus, Noel. Jeez. Get your shit together, girl. What are you oh, doing oh. to us here? No, no, no. I'm sorry. She just, the maid just left. It kind of threw her off the game. Oh, we're on a delay. We're on a delay. Yeah, baloney. Bullshit. 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 All right. I'll close the show. Gumad's over strong all day long. It's the Big V Mafia. The Big Vito brand. Twitch.tv at Big Vito. And of course, I'm at Not Jargo. We will talk to you next week for a new edition of Men of Business. For now, we're off like a prom dress. See ya. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Hope you had a good time. Take care.